Alderman Burris. Here. Alderman Fisk. Here. Alderman Bradway. Here. Alderman Wynn. Alderman Wilson. Here. Alderman Holmes. Here. Alderman Tindum. Here. Alderman Grover. Here. Alderman Rainey. Here. Alrighty. We have a quorum. Welcome to the Monday, October 27th, 2014 meeting of the Evanston City Council. Uh, first item on the agenda is Mayor's public announcements and proclamations. I am happy to announce that trick-or-treating is from 4 to 7 on Friday. So everyone have a wonderful time and be safe. And City Manager, do you have public announcements? I do, Madam Mayor, members of the Council, good evening. Uh, we're having an event on October 30th, this coming Thursday, uh, to help uh, with our bike safety efforts. Cindy Plant, our ICMA fellow, is here uh, to provide a report. Cindy, good evening. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the Council. Uh, Cindy Plant, ICMA fellow. Um, and I've been working for the past two weeks on our Pedal Bright bike safety event and bike lake distribution, uh, which will be going on this Thursday afternoon from 4.30 to 6.30 at Robert Crown Center and at Northwestern University on campus underneath the Weber Arch near uh, Chicago Avenue and Sheridan Road. Uh, as part of the event, we will be distributing uh, safety information. We have everyday bicycling from the Active Transportation Alliance that they've provided, as well as the Illinois Bicycle Rules of the Road from the Secretary of State's office. Uh, 311 and the Evanston Police Department will be on hand to help people register their bikes to prevent bike theft in Evanston. And we will also be handing out these super awesome LED taillights and we have some headlights that have been ordered as well uh, from Wheel and Sprocket. Um, we've also gotten sponsorships from several other community partners including ETHS, Royce Moore School, uh, Wheel and Sprocket, Active Transportation Alliance. We keep adding more. It's, it's great. The reception has been excellent so far. I'm he hearing a lot of great feedback in the community and people are really excited about the event. So come out, bring your bike, get a light, learn about bike safety. Cindy, question, um, who's paying for all this? So we have, <laughs> we've gotten funding from all these great sponsors that I just mentioned. Uh, Evanston Bicycle Club uh, providing us with some of the funding as well as volunteers. Uh, Wheel and Sprocket gave us the lights at a deep discount, I'm, I'm told below cost, um, that we are then paying for with all of this money that we've raised uh, from these community organizations and businesses, so we are not using city money. So this is truly a community city partnership? Yes. Thank you. Well, Cindy, you might be the appropriate person for me to uh, give this to. I have a letter saying, Dear Mayor Tisdall, on my recent trip to Germany, I learned that all children between the ages of 9 and 10 are required by law to take a training course to obtain a license to ride their bike on city streets. In view of the increase of bike riders on Evanston streets, and I am sure the children's <coughs> safety is of great concern to you, I thought the enclosed video might present some food for thought. Very truly yours, Bernd J. Ruckdeschel. I'm sorry I massacred his last name, but here's an excellent video of ways to teach children bike Sorry. safety. All right, I'll definitely review that and I will trade you for a bike light. <laughs> I got a bike light. If you get a headlight, let me know. I, I'm getting them tomorrow. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Cindy. Thank you very much. That concludes my reports, Madam Mayor. City Clerk, do you have communications? Not at this time, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, then we'll go to public comment, and I am going to reserve the right to break into it at some point for a uh, proclamation that I'm going to read when the recipients of the proclamation show up. Um, first four speakers are Laura Beth Nielsen, Annette Rosier, Jason Spencer, and Peggy Tarr. Um, for allotting me some time. My name is Laura Beth Nielsen. Two years ago, I came to the City Council to talk about the fact that there is um, not a legal place to skateboard in Evanston, and we um, an ad hoc committee was formed to look into a skate park, which was a partnership, or which consisted of Evanston Parks and Rec, 
guys and um, Ridgeville Park District and a senior at ETHS High School as his senior studies service project and me as a member of the community. Um, the committee met a number of times and very usefully we um, obtained some design, some possible designs and we looked at best practices for skate parks and so on. Um, in the last week or so, it's become clear that Ridgeville is probably, at least in its current composition, unlikely to donate the land, which is fine. And so we met and sort of decided that that ad hoc committee should probably stop meeting, which is perfectly okay with me because I'm not into meetings that go nowhere. But there are still a number of skateboarding issues that I think the Evanston City Council should address. And um, it remains illegal to skate in most part in most parts of Evanston. Um, I offered and Mayor Tisdall said she would be willing to look at some ordinance drafting. I'm, I've contacted a lawyer um, who does this for best practices. But I feel like we need to thoughtfully move forward towards best practices for this sport in Evanston. And so I've prepared this handout um, to begin talking about skateboarding in a constructive way. And at some point, I'll bring lots of skateboarders with me, but I think that's a little premature. And I just briefly want to pause and apologize if anything I have said personally or done that implies that I think that a skate park should be part of Penny Park or part of the Robert Crown revamp. I understand that this would be a whole new project, um, and I, I want I made some comparisons and that was probably unhelpful and so I want to apologize and understand that we are starting from scratch and that this will probably happen for my grandchildren's grandchildren's I just said that word so I've handed out this flyer and I just want to give you some facts um, national estimates are that there are about 14 million skateboarders in the United States at the national average rate, that means we have about 4,000 skateboarders. We're not at the national average rate. We're a college town. We're an active town. We're a highly educated town. All of those um, make for more skateboarders. Um, the number of skateboarders has increased 60% between 1999 and 2002 in the United States. 15% of teenagers aged 12 to 17 skateboard once in a while, and for 8%, it's their primary sport. So 8% of teenagers, 12 to 17, this is their primary sport. My sons are among them. I also skate. I can even skate in stack heels. <laughs> um, informal, non-tracked, non-competitive sports like skateboarding have been shown, and all of these claims are backed up with um, usually, mostly peer-reviewed social science data. Um, informal, non-tracked sports like skateboarding promote racially diverse relationships in diverse communities where friendships can be um, very segregated, and that has certainly been the experience of my own children. There are over 5,000 skate parks in the United States. Many can be and many are built and maintained LEED certified with gardens, landscaping, and incorporating the Laura, I need you to wrap up. I'm, I'm sorry, I did tell you earlier that three minutes per speaker. Right, I'm happy to stick to three minutes. Has it been over three minutes? Yes. Okay, you just have to let me know. Okay, well, I'll be back at the next meeting right. with volume You'll two. You'll be welcome. Great. Are there any questions? <laughs> no. Not during public comment. Annette. Good evening. So my name is Annette Braden Rosier. I reside on, at 821 Mulford, and I used to be a resident on 907 Sherman. And you might remember I, have, I was here before, and I wish I could speak on something more pleasant, but it's this ongoing issue on of the noise on that street coming from Revolution Spin. Uh, I have since then moved away, um, partially because of the noise level of this neighborhood, and some of the noise can't be clear, clearly is inevitable. But uh, the one that is particularly annoying, which has been coming from Revolution X, that could be helped. Um, and. It's very nice to live in a quiet neighborhood, I can tell you that right now. And most of you, I bet, do live in a quiet neighborhood. I enjoy that every day. Um, and who wants to wake up on Sunday morning to uh, boot camp uh, shouting? Um, this time we come because we have a petition. 
Um, I don't enjoy being here. Uh, and I bet uh, that many people who would other, who have been bothered by the same thing uh, do, come, don't speak up because they have more important things to do. They are busy with their lives. They don't enjoy uh, speaking up. Um, and it takes time out of people's busy <coughs> lives. It's bit easier to put up with annoyances than actually doing something about it. And it takes courage to take action. And some of us are simply afraid. And Peggy Tarr has been somebody who has been persistently speaking out uh, and was blamed uh, of being the only one being bothered by it, uh, which is simply not true. Uh, Peggy has been nothing but a kind and watchful neighbor to uh, all of us in the building, and th she's the kind of neighbor you want. And these signatures, 55, 54 signatures, show that she is not the only one, and I wasn't the only one, and Jason isn't the only one. Um, these are signatures by people who uh, are uh, either residents or patrons of the, of the stores or people who just walk by and wonder what's going on or people who work in the uh, neighboring businesses. Uh, I read the petition. Do I have the time? Uh, yes, if you read quickly. City of Evanston. We, the undersigned, petition the City of Evanston to en enforce City of Ev uh, Evanston Mun Municipal Code 9520 and require Revolution X owner Jason Bressler or CAS management take immediate measures to soundproof Revolution X to prevent the emission of noise from Revolution X that annoys, disturbs, and endangers the health of residents and deprives residents of peace and quiet. And uh, the resolution or uh, the code is it shall be unlawful for any person within the city to make, continue, or cause to be made, made or continued any loud, unnecessary, or unusual noise which either annoys, disturbs, uh, injures or endangers the comfort, repose, convenient health, peace, or safety of others within the limits of, uh, of the city. Um, okay, now you're out of time. Okay. Perfect timing. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Jason Spencer. It's too loud where I live. It's 907 Sherman. I can't even leave my window open for my cat. My cat goes really bonkers and he tries to bite me. He doesn't like that noise. And one day I was at Maine Foods, Maine and Elm, and I could hear it from all the way down there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm here again, and fortunately for you, I have a throat, so I can't talk very much. But I did want to say that um, some of the people did not want to sign the petition for fear in one place for fear of being told they'd have to move. And I have one, t one uh, message that I wanted to play for you because the person lives in the apartment building that houses Revolution X. And he evidently was afraid to leave his name. And, and you'll have to excuse my tape. Hi, um, I'm calling in regard to a petition a request that's uh, on my door in regard to Spin Nation, uh, this cycling exercise thing that they do. Um, it's a building that actually that I live in. And it's really over the top. They use a microphone and they shout out at the top of their lungs. Um, it's winter right now and you still can hear them with all the windows shut. In the summertime, it's totally outrageous. Uh, it's a residential area that like, needs to either get the microphone turned down, you know, or move it to a non-residential area. I can totally and then grant it over the position. Thank you very much. Bye. Now, we said soundproof, but... 
What we're asking is for something to be done. Alderman Wilson said that he suggested to them that they use some kind of material that would help block out the sound. There's no reason why we have to hear this noise. People in the 800 block of Sherman can hear it. People on Main Street can hear it. A couple came around one night from Main Street to see where the noise was coming from. We've asked nicely, and I've asked not so nicely because I've had to write letters to please do something about it. There's no reason why we should have to suffer. Uh, thank you. Alan Price. All right, I think he left. Uh, All right, we have representatives from Mount Zion and Second Baptist here, so I am going to read the proclamation. Evanston Own It Day, November 1st, 2014. Whereas it is the responsibility of each Evanston resident to claim ownership of their home, their block, and their community. And whereas all people deserve to live in a safe and caring community. And whereas all adults and children in Evanston should feel that all of Evanston belongs to them and they own it. And Whereas the faith-based community recognizes and owns their call to stand in full partnership and service to the Evanston community and is committed to furthering the understanding that what happens to one in Evanston happens to all. And whereas the faith-based community offers support and pledge to work, when, to work and fellowship with all residents to achieve and own its spirit, and whereas over the next year the faith-based community will promote a series of activities and events that will encourage all residents to own Evanston and whereas the first such event will be held on Saturday November 1st 2014 to encourage all Evanston residents to vote early on that day now therefore I Elizabeth B Tisdall mayor of the city of Evanston do hereby proclaim Saturday, November 1st, 2014, as Evanston Own It Day. This marks the beginning of Evanston Own It in the city of Evanston. Here you go. What? Did you, you want to speak? All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I came, I came early and then I left and came back and you would always go, go right ahead and speak. Okay, my name is Priscilla. Um, could I say one thing first though before you get started? Um, if you could vote November 1st, that's wonderful. However, if you can't vote November 1st, just vote, please. <laughs> City clerk's office is open. Would you like to tell them when? Um, 8.30 to 5, the city clerk's office is open, but voting will be until November 3rd in this building on the second floor in room 2200. And then on the polling days, on November 4th, on Tuesday, you go to your polling location and place your vote from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Okay, my name is Priscilla Giles, and I am speaking to the um, bike, um, Mason Park Bike Improvement. And... Um, I'm speaking because a decision is to be made and the, co the community has not had a chance to even talk about it. Um, I think that um, there was a street, it could be done, and maybe the com uh, community might be in favor of it. I live about two blocks from there. I had 
no idea where the bike path would be, and I think that I'm not the only one, and I think that the community should have a meeting before any decisions are made. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that does, I believe, conclude citizen comment. Um, next is special orders of business, city manager. Yes, Madam Mayor, members of the council, uh, we were with you a few weeks ago talking about bike issues. There was one uh, that we did not complete, and that was in biking improvements uh, adjacent to Evanston Township High School, Church Street, and Mason Park. Uh, Sat Nagar, the city engineer, is here, uh, has a presentation. Uh, the presentation is also available online. Uh, there's a, a map in particular that the council was, was keen to see, and so we'll be showing that to you, but you can also pull it up online. Sat, good evening. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the Council, City Manager Mr. Bobkovich, City Clerk, Deputy City Clerk Mr. Year, Sad Nagar, City Engineer. Um, we are here to complete the discussion of the proposed uh, biking um, improvements on uh, ETHS um, and Church Street as well as the Mason Park. Um, we have a brief uh, presentation. We can go through that and I'll be able to answer any questions. Um, the section, the Church Street ETHS bike path is the section between Dodge and Pitner. Um, most of this off-street bike path will be on the school uh, right-of-way, so ETHS right-of-way. Since we met uh, last time on September 29th, we had a pretty much a field uh, meeting with the administrative staff, and uh, we did walk the section of um, ETHS uh, property and came back with an alignment which would uh, work both for the city as well as for the school. As a part of this, let me go back, uh, yeah, this is the, the uh, yes, so we are starting at uh, Dodge and um, this is the section all the way to Pitner. So in this section between um, uh, Dodge and um, a smaller section, we want an off-street um, bike path away from the street. And, um, and the section, as you can see, we are um, identifying three different sections. One is the on-street bike path, off-street bike path, and um, off-street um, you know, multi-use path. The section, we are going to have the section between Dodge and Pitner. It's a combination of the off-street bike path and the off-street multi-use path. There is an existing sidewalk in this um, in the section. There's an existing sidewalk in the section um, pretty much uh, between um, Pitner and Dodge for a major length. So we'll convert that to a multi-use path and uh, just go ahead and construct an off-street bike path west of Dodge. Um, there are several um, trees. There are several trees, and in discussion with the school, um, the school feels that uh, some of those trees um, have to come down because of the condition. And we did have the city arborist, uh, Mr. D'Agostino, did a review of the tree review of those trees, and um, he did indicate that uh, several trees has to come down, um, has to be taken down because of the condition of the trees. Um, and um, this is the only section where there will be tree impacts, and the section uh, between. Um, where we are showing the multi-use path, we will uh, not be impacting any trees. The next uh, section is a little bit more um, complex. This is the section between um, Pitner and uh, McCormick to connect with the existing path. We are uh, proposing an on-street um, median uh, separated uh, two-way bike lane on the south side. The reason for uh, the median um, is uh, we have um, Dodge, which is um, two-way with the traffic, so the section of the bike path has to be separated from the travel lane, so we are uh, recommending a median. And as a part of the bike path, we are recommending the stop signs at uh, McDaniel, uh, Fowler, and Pitner just to make sure that uh, the pedestrians can cross and uh, in order to eliminate any conflicts. Also, as a part of this project, uh, we are um, recommending, uh, we will be recommending uh, uh, pretty much a pedestrian crossing at um, McDaniel. Um, in this section between uh, Pitner and um, all, all the way up to McDaniel, there will be parking impacts. Um, um, the, um, par the existing parking on the south side um, has to be removed in order to accommodate this um, bike path. 
This uh, section is, um, I have not uh, seen any of the IDOT streets. This is being built. So we had to go with, uh, we need to talk to IDOT, have a coordination and um, develop some of the plans and get their approval. Excuse me, Alderman Braithwaite has a question. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Sat, do you, are you going to show us uh, a chart or a, uh, a map of where those impacts are going to be along Pitner? The section uh, pretty much between um, Pitner and uh, McDaniel, there are about 24 uh, parking spaces on the south side. Uh, those 24 uh, parking spaces will be impacted because of the bike path. Based on the length of the block, there are two blocks between McDaniel and Fowler and Fowler to Pitner. Um, on the south side. No, no, Pitner runs east and no, I'm talking about the south. Church Street. Okay, I thought it said on Pitner. Go back a slide. There are my parking impacts. Okay. So just on Church Street, nothing yes, on Yes, just Pitner. on Church Street. Nothing on the side street. No, nothing on the north-south street. Just on the thing. When you say impacts, does that mean we're losing? We'll be losing the parking, yes. 24 spaces. Yes. Impacts is a nice way to say it. Uh, Alderman Drover. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nagar. The uh, City School Committee met last week, and Mr. Mm -hmm. Nagar uh, brought some of this information. The proposal was pretty clear talking to uh, the safety personnel from ETHS that they think this is a really important thing for all the students getting to ETHS, the ones who are coming from east of, or west of McCormick, those who are taking the bike path through the Arboretum to get to school. The, the students are also uh, riding south on Gray and Brown to get to ETHS, that uh, we need better connections altogether for all the students who are filling the bike corral with their bikes at ETHS. So this is a critical, critical connector. Uh, Skokie is also building and extending their bike path uh, eastward to McCormick along Church Street, and we're looking to make that connection as well, and this is a, a key component. Uh, Alderman Holmes. Um, the north side of that is the fifth ward, and there is parking on the north side of church as well. And also, when you get to McDaniel, um, south of church, there's parking on both um, the north, I mean, the west and the east side. As the same thing is on Fowler. There's so there is off street parking that should accommodate uh, for those 24 spaces. I'm, I think. Thank you, Alderman Grover. Nagar, is there room on the, the bridge over the canal to accommodate a two-way cycle track? Is there enough lane width? We need to work on those uh, details okay. and how we go back to the, you know, connect with the sidewalk. Um, we need to work on those details. Okay. Um, as I um, um, mentioned that when once we reach near the bridge, we may have to make sure that uh, there is enough room and we can either go on the bridge or on the sidewalk. We need to work out some of the details with IDAD as well. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And you know, there's another, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, um, there's another possibility, and this is another year down the line, but the North Shore um, School um, that's there on the north um, west corner will be closing because they're moving out in Skokie, and uh, we're going to have to talk to um, the um, Metropolitan Sanitary District because we don't know what's going to happen with there, and there's lots of parking there as well that might be able that we might be able to uh, work with as well. Because they will, I think, uh, Shore School will move next. Uh, I want to say next June or July. Yeah, it's coming up. Yes, yeah, coming up. Mm -hmm. So that's another option. Uh, for parking, we have no idea what they're going to do with the space. That's one of the things that we need to meet with Deborah Shore about to find out what's going to happen. We should meet with her soon. I think so too. Yeah. I just um, wanted to mention um, one more thing on uh, Church Street between um, Bridge and um, uh, between McCarm between the bridge or the channel and Pitna. There are four lanes. Mm -hmm. uh, just in that section, I when we do not see a need to have four lanes. 
So reducing the two, two lanes and um, having a bike path would make uh, more uh, sense and it would probably increase the safety of the pedestrians Slightly. crossing the Church Street. So that would be pretty much a traffic uh, calming effect now. People are trying to, you know, overtake in speed in that section. So this would um, increase the safety and um, pretty much accommodate the bike lanes as well. And uh, just to let you know that even though I did mention there is room for 24 parking spaces, still we will do a parking survey to make sure who is parking there and how much it is being used. Mm -hmm. We'll go through the whole process before um, coming up with the real uh, impacts. That's why I left it as impacts and That's okay. real numbers. Just to Thank you very much. <clears throat> Um, Oops, the next uh, steps is um, we, we have um, planned um, a public meeting on November 6th at the Erie Health Center um, and um, in which we'll be talking about the Dodge Avenue as well as the Church Street and the Mason Park, um, all the three projects and we'll be able to answer any questions from the residents and uh, we'll, you know, as I mentioned that uh, we'll have a detailed exhibits, the same exhibits you're going to make presentations and uh, solicit input from the residents as well. And um, if the, with the council um, approval, then we can start working with ETHS and IDAT on the design. And so when we go to the transportation, the parking committee, then we will come up with the real impacts on the parking and then, um, of course, the city council approval before we go with uh, constructing the project. There are several steps in which we will be coming back with uh, the impacts and what is the progress so far um, and uh, giving an update to the council. Alderman Braithwaite. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So, just quick question. This is the first time I've seen that date, so I'm looking at my calendar <coughs> first before I make my comment. <coughs> and then the second question is, how are you informing residents about that meeting on the 6th? We did um, advertise this in the paper and it will be on the website, the city, uh, city website regarding the meeting next week. And what we time have is a it flyer. The time. The meeting is 7 o'clock. Do you have flyers? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is a, brought up a good point. We did mention this at the fifth ward uh, meeting about mm -hmm. the about the public meeting as well. So uh, we will, uh, it's going to be on the website as well. So that's why I'm letting you know that it's November 6th, that is next week and um, uh, from uh, seven to nine, we'll make all the presentations and we will want to get some input from the residents as well. Well, is it possible just to get some half flyers so I can figure out a way to apply? Yes. Thank you. Absolutely, yes. Okay, moving on to the, the Mason Street uh, bike path. Um, yeah, let me make sure I use that point right. Okay. Um, as of um, now, the Davis Street is a bike route. So all we are trying to do is um, go back. We are we want to complete the missing um, connection between Davis and Church. Um, basically. West of uh, Mason Park, between Mason Park and Dodge, we have um, two-way bike lane on Church, and then Davis is a bike route. So we need to somehow get the bikers going westbound on Davis to go to Church so that they can continue on Church to Dodge and um, all the way up to the McCormick path. So um, as a part of this, we want to... Let me go. Now, if you look at the... I need to get a new point with this. Okay, here you go. Yeah, this is the Davis Street. All we are suggesting is there will be no changes to the Davis Street. We will have um, pretty much um, have an access, access ramp at Davis, and there is an existing sidewalk within the Mason Park. So we, are, we want to use part of this um, existing walk because it is straight uh, path want to use a part of this the bike path and then construct a new path to the west of the existing path to connect with the um, bike path on church um, the, we are also suggesting that um, we should have a separate pedestrian walk 
in case if the bikers, uh, more bikers start using this section to separate the pedestrians from the bike for at least half of this length. So as you can see that uh, this, this section would be the proposed uh, pedestrian walk and this would be the existing bike path and we will connect with the bike path on uh, Church Street. That's all the changes. Um, just to let you know, there will be no impact to the existing um, trees or any of the existing infrastructure within the Mason Park. Um, as I mentioned, only the south portion of the sidewalk in the Mason Park will be impacted. Um, the reason we um, do not um, want to widen the existing path is there is tennis courts as well as the you have the pretty much the um, basketball courts and uh, so we don't, we don't want to make any changes to the existing so within the existing path we are trying to connect and uh, keep the impacts to the minimum um, so again with the same uh, steps um, we'll be discussing the Mason Park improvements at the meeting on November 6th and then um, coming going through the same process of um, going to the transportation and coming back to the City Council um, and if um, uh, the approval of the city council would like to construct this next year because it's going to be pretty simple uh, construction with the minimum impacts to the park and anything, any other infrastructure in the park. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everyone's asked all their questions. Okay. Um, Alderman Rainey, could we have the consent agenda, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the consent agenda is as follows. Um, approval of the minutes of the regular city council meeting, October 13, and approval of the minutes of the regular council meeting of October 20th. Tonight, the Administration uh, and Public Works Committee met and asked your approval of the payroll through October 5, uh, $2,641,880.71. The bills through the 28th of October, $2,183,663.39. Um, A31, uh, we request uh, that you authorize the manager to execute a five-year single-source service and maintenance agreement with this and Krupp Elevator Corporation uh, for the elevators at Sherman Plaza Parking Garage at a cost of $34,436.16 for the period April 1, 2014 to March 31, 2019. This involves a reduction of $4,747 for the first year and a 12% decrease when compared to last year's agreement. Um, there will possibly be annual increases in years two through five. Next, we have A3.2, and we're requesting you authorize the manager to execute a contract for consulting services for the study and creation of a special service area, SSA, for the business districts along Chicago Avenue and the intersections of Main and Dempster Street, inclusive of the Chicago Main and Dempster Chicago Merchant Districts, with place consulting for a total amount of $36,983.78. We ask your approval uh, to introduce uh, Ordinance 125014, amending the code of 2012 uh, to increase the number of authorized Class C-1 liquor licenses from six to seven. Uh, A5 is being held in uh, committee and will be ab addressed by the committee chair. A6 is uh, an ordinance which amends the city code of 2012, subsection 346, parentheses O, as amended to increase the number of authorized class O liquor licenses from zero to one. This is for introduction and the committee agreed to allow for the sp suspension of the rules um, and will be addressed by the committee chair. A7, we ask your approval um, to adopt Ordinance 114014, which permits the sale of beer in 22-ounce containers for off-site consumption for the current Class P2 liquor license. 
Your approval is requested uh, for the adoption of Ordinance 12014 to dissolve the Southwest uh, Tax Increment Finance District effective December 31, 2014. The Planning and Development Committee also met this evening and requests approval for uh, introduction for granting a special use for a Type 2 restaurant, 800 degrees, uh, Neapolitan Pizzeria at 812 Church Street. Uh, uh, your approval is also requested for introduction and suspension of the rules um, for Ordinance 130014, granting a special use to permit a Type 2 restaurant, Beth's Little Bake Shop in the B1A Business District in the Central Street Overlay District. Next is P3, which is, we request uh, that you uh, Alderman Rainey? Yes. It's um, up. Is that off the consent yes. agenda? Okay. Well, I'm going to ask that it be. Okay. I mean, I'm going to ask that the rule be suspended. Is that what you want, or do you want me to take it off? Well, I wanted to ask Alderman Grover, did you want P2 off the agenda for suspension of the rules? Yes, I, okay. think, it was, I think it just happened. Okay. I did. Yeah, thank you. I oh, did. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't catch it. So now let's talk about P3. Yeah. P3, I'm asking uh, for introduction and your approval to suspend the rules uh, for the adoption of Ordinance 131014, granting a special use permit for a Type 2 restaurant, Patisserie Coralie, in the D2 Downtown Retail Core District. Uh, P4 is, is, P4 is, <laughs> I'm distracted. Uh, you are moving to introduce them all. No, I'm moving now for action on P4, okay. which is uh, amending Title IV, uh, Chapter 14 of the City Code from Site Plan and Appearance Review, SPARC, to Design and Project Review, DAPR. Um, adoption of this ordinance will institute a revised staff design and project review process. process. Staff has identified several revisions that are noted in the attached ordinance that will change this review process and lead to improved recommendations. Ordinance 119014 grants a special use for a restaurant type 2 at 1613 Sherman Avenue. This is Doc Popcorn in the D2 Downtown Retail Core District. P6, we ask that uh, you approve adoption of Ordinance 110014 to allow daycare center child and daycare center adult as a special use in C1 and C2 commercial districts. Under Human Services, uh, Ordinance 111014 amends the city code to increase the age of the age of sale, purchase of tobacco or liquid nicotine project products from 18 to 21 years of age. Madam Mayor, there are no uh, recommendations for committees or boards, and therefore I move adoption of the consent agenda. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the consent agenda. City Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Burris. Aye. Alderman Fisk. Aye. Alderman Bratway. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Holmes. Aye. Alderman Tindum. Aye. Alderman Grover. Aye. Alderman Rainey. Aye. Eight to nothing, the motion passes. Alderman Holmes, would you walk us through administration and public works? Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. Um, A5, Ordinance 126-0-14, increasing the number of Class F, F liquor license for Highland Park CVS doing business at LLC doing business at CVS Pharmacy at number 8760 at 3333 Central Street. Um, the I would the committee discuss this and would hold it in committee until there is a meeting held with the CBS um, representatives and our city staff and I guess the alderman. All right. So it's been held in committee. Um, A six. 
is Ordinance 127-0-14, uh, increasing the number of Class O liquor licenses for um, Dill Foods, doing business at Shell Gas Station at 2494 Oakton uh, Street. Um, we would move approval and also suspension of the rules for tonight. I, you moved, to, oh, excuse me. Um, we have a motion and a second to move up to first to suspend the rules. Sus you did? Uh, she's, okay. I think she suspended right, the rules you, doing that. Um, Perfect. Call. All right, so it's been moved to um, accept it. Accept ordinance 127014, increase, yes. increasing the number of Class O liquor licenses for Dill Foods at 2494 Oakton Street. Uh, City Clerk, would you call the roll? Councilman Burns. Alderman Fisk, Alderman Bradway, Alderman Wilson, Alderman Holmes. Oh, aye. I'm sorry. Alderman Tendon, Alderman Grover, aye. Alderman Rainey. Aye. Eight to one. The motion passes. Um, Alderman Holmes, does that complete your report? That completes my report, Madam Excellent. Mayor. Excellent. Alderman Fisk. Do we have planning and development, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, P2, Ordinance 130014, granting a special use for a restaurant type 2 at 1814 Central Street, Beth's Little Bake Shop. It was on the consent agenda for introduction. I move suspension of the rules. Oh, did we do? Okay. Then I, rem um, I move adoption. All right. It's been moved and seconded to pass ordinance. 130014. Um, City Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Burris, Aye. Alderman Fisk, Aye. Alderman Bratway, Aye. Alderman Wilson, Aye. Alderman Holmes, Aye. Alderman Tendo, Aye. Alderman Grover, Aye. Alderman Rainey. Aye. Eight to one. The motion passes. That's the end of P and D. Don't you have oh, P3? P3. Um, I thought we did all of P3. Alderman Rainey, did we do all of P3? You've got us. Okay, then I move adoption of Ordinance 131014, granting a special use for a restaurant type 2, Patisserie Coralie at 600 Davis Street. It's been moved and seconded to approve Ordinance 131014. Uh, City Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Burris? Aye. Alderman Fisk? Aye. Alderman Bratway? Alderman Wilson, Aye. Alderman Holmes, Aye. Alderman Tindum, Aye. Alderman Grover, Aye. Alderman Rainey. Aye. Eight to one. The motion passes. Excellent work, everyone. Um, we are at call of the wards. Alderman Burris. No thank you. Alderman Fisk. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I want to make two referrals to Planning and Development Committee. Uh, first, that um, that the review of the plan development process include um, reports from the IEPA uh, for testing on phase one and two testing on uh, all plan developments in Evanston. The second referral is uh, for a study for an outdoor light ordinance. Um, this is something that is uh, that we lack and that is a energy efficiency um, that has been recognized as a need in the city of Evanston from our star communities. I think on the report from the um, um, from our award from the star communities in March, uh, we were still lacking um, a light a light ordinance that would give us some control over not only energy efficiency but security and the effect of lights on uh, from one property to another. So that is a referral to PND. Uh, thank you. Um, if I can just say Boulder, Colorado has a really good ordinance in effect. If we can take a look at that. Thank you. Alderman Braithwaite. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. First, I'd like to send a word of condolences to the family of Miss Dooley. Uh, she passed several weeks ago, and unfortunately, I was out of town for a funeral. But just uh, for her many contributions to the second ward, I just wanted to share that. Uh, and, and as well, I just want to quickly thank uh, the staff at ETHS. This morning, I had an opportunity to participate in their parent shadow day, and it was very well organized. Uh, a lot of parents uh, were out, and, and typically when you go to these things, you always just see the same old faces, but I think it was very, very well organized and a very diverse crowd, so I just want to acknowledge all the wonderful staff and my kids for allowing me to uh, go into their classrooms today. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alderman Wilson. Thank you, Alderman Holmes. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. I just want to say that yesterday I attended the um, Foster Senior Club Fashion Show, and I just want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen of the council, please put next October on your calendar. Uh, you're in for a treat. Um, I mean, to be there, and especially to see the golden ladies who are all over 90. And uh, they Mrs. strut. They strut. They actually got up on the catwalk and walked. And one Miss Kelly, who is I uh, ninety two or three, was escorted by her brother, who was a hundred and one. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. So next year, I hope you will put it on your calendar. It's just really, it's you, it's a wonderful way to spend. It's a long afternoon, but it's a wonderful way to spend an afternoon. Thank you. That's it, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Tendum. Thank you. Not quite as exciting as that, but I do have a ward meeting coming up for the 6th Ward on Thursday, 7 p.m. at Three Crowns. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Grover. I just want to take a moment to thank the Evanston Bike Club for all of their great support and insight on our bike initiatives from the bike infrastructure to bike education. They're, I think, going to be a really great partner with us in all these things. So thank you very much, Evanston Bike Club. Thank you. Alderman Rainey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to uh, reach out to CVS and tell them how excited I am about meeting with them in the next week and resolving all the issues surrounding Asbury and Oakton and uh, their CVS store on Central Street. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Well, it wasn't quite as fast as Alderman Fisk, but it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs>